Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's The Adventures of Gilligan's Island, brought to us by Bandai. Based off the television series, Gilligan's Island, you play as the Skipper and Gilligan and go through four episodes of collecting various items and doing fetch quests in order to complete goals in each one of the episodes. As we begin the game, we get the roll call of the characters, though funny enough, Ginger is not a member of this game, I guess. I assume it was a licensing issue, the actress that played Ginger really hated the role overall and said it devastated her career so she never came back for anything else Gilligan's Island related. But the rest of the characters are here. As we begin the game, you can either continue using a password or start episode 1. We get a little bit of a cutscene before we get control of Skipper. Each one of the episodes has a main goal, but there's also other goals that we'll have to accomplish before we're able to finish that main goal. Episode 1, we are building a hut. The game is kind of an escort quest, as you have to have Gilligan with you at all times in order to pretty much complete anything. And Gilligan has to be right next to you between screens in order for him to actually continue on with you. And it's very easy to lose Gilligan. He can be chased off by enemies and the like, and overall is a complete nuisance, which is, I guess, fitting. Go down here to this area and talk to Mr. Hal, who will tell you he lost his wedding band. After we've talked to him, we can now head to where the wedding band is located, which is a big tree. When you're in the uh, quicksand, you have to mash the button really quickly in order to go through it. It's a little bit annoying for sure. When you're in this kind of water, you can see it's pushing me downwards, so you want to start at the very top so you have enough space to make it across the gap and over it safely without going down. Now, you won't lose a life or anything like that. There's actually shortcuts that can be had by using the waterways and similar looking traps throughout the course of the game. We'll use several throughout in order to help us navigate this island a little bit easier. Over here to the far left side is the giant tree. Interestingly enough, as soon as you're like on here and Gilligan is near the tree, you get the ring. You don't actually have to stick around for the little cutscene of Gilligan and Skipper talking. You can actually just leave and go back to Mr. Howe. But I, of course, want to show you guys the little bit of dialogue that goes on between the characters for each one of the cutscenes. Now all we have to do is go exactly the same way we traveled, backwards, and get to Mr. Hal and give him the wedding ring. And pretty much that sums up this game. That's majority of the missions that you're going to be doing are exactly that. Thankfully there are boss encounters in each episode, if you want to call them that. They're very easy fights that we'll have to do. But each episode does have one of them to at least break things up a bit. If you ever see me just stop and I'm just kind of waiting, of course, I'm getting Gilligan to get to me, and if you notice, if I go quickly between one screen and another and go backwards real fast, it's because I missed Gilligan and he didn't follow me to the screen. It's so dumb when you go to that next screen, everybody's pretty much just like, where's Gilligan? We have no idea where he is. We can't continue with our possible plot. Oh, you have my wedding ring? It doesn't matter. Gilligan's not with you. I don't care. There are very useful items throughout the island that you'll find scattered. They're kind of randomly placed. They just appear in certain locations. It'll either be food or rope. 
the rope will allow you to bring Gilligan to you. So if you lose Gilligan for whatever reason, you can call him towards you using the rope. So a lot of times you could just forget about Gilligan, skip him, and just let him stay somewhere else and get to one of the characters or the next item you need, then call him. But you do have a limited number of ropes. Down here we meet with the professor who gives us a club. The club is how we know we're getting close to the boss encounter for each one of these episodes. He just always has a club that he ends up giving the skipper to get ready to uh, deal with the nuisance. The club also works better than the fist of skippers in order to take care of most enemies, but usually I just try to avoid most uh, bad guys throughout the course of the game. When we make it up here, we're now going to head over to the right, going across this bridge. Be careful not to go up or down, just jump over anything coming your way. Even if you survive going up or down a little bit, Gilligan may go a little too far and end up falling down into the pit, which is just going to be a pain going down there and then navigating back up. This is one of those games I remember playing as a kid, but I had absolutely no idea how to make much progress. I don't know if I even really completed an episode of it when I was young. Here we go with the first boss encounter. Now this fight is pretty much going to be how we do every fight in the game. Uh, we're going to get the boss up against this wall and we're just going to mash the attack button. Other bosses will go against the wall, which ends up helping us a little bit avoid any potential attacks from them. But this first boss, we can just easily get into this corner and mash the attack button, or you can time it if you like. Either way, just have it set up and keep hitting the boss until the boss decides to leave. You don't defeat the boss, they just leave, and usually drop an item behind, in which case now we have that, and we gotta take it back to the professor. Be very careful on the next screen, you don't accidentally move too quickly, you'll end up going to that pit. Thankfully, there's a nice shortcut that we can take using the sand pit. This allows us to get back to this area quicker. Just make sure that Gilligan is with you when you do so, or be prepared to use a rope. Head down here and over back to the right to go to the professor and hand him the broken transmitter. For our uh, efforts, we end up getting a saw, which allows us to cut down a tree, which we can then build the hut with. So now we got to work our way back to the giant tree. We're going to head over to the left here. Gilligan gets attacked by monkeys on several occasions during this, but he just easily gets back up. Thankfully, you don't got to worry about health with Gilligan, just the skipper's health. And if it gets low, just eat food items, which I will use a few times throughout the game. Be careful of all the wild boars on this screen. There's quite a few of them that will be running around as we make it back up to the sand little pit here, make it across, and over to the giant tree. Just interact with it, and you'll instantly cut it down, and it disappears. I guess you've taken what you need. From time to time, you'll come across an hourglass, which will give you a little bit of time back, so if you're running low, they are useful. Thankfully, knowing the direct paths through this area, the uh, timer isn't going to be something that we have to worry about. Now it's time to build the hut. It doesn't really matter if I lose Gilligan, I have plenty of ropes right this second, so... I'll just run quickly through the area, get to where we need to be, and then I can call Gilligan at the last second, and it counts. As long as Gilligan's then on screen, you can complete whatever task, in this case, finishing up episode number one. The enemies are a little bit weird when you jump. You can avoid getting hit. Even though it looks like you're going to get hit, you actually end up avoiding their uh, hitbox, I guess. Here I call Gilligan right at the end, and I finish the stage as he appears. And then we're going on now to episode two.
Episode number two has Mary Ann being kidnapped by headhunters. And while the goal has changed and the part of the island that we get to navigate has changed, pretty much what we do hasn't. Be careful going across the water here so you make it safely. Gilligan doesn't have to worry about getting rushed off the screen, thankfully. Make your way over to the right side here and then go into the water for a shortcut into the cave system. Then go to this ladder right away and find Mr. Hal. He'll let you know about a stone tablet that's down into that cave system. We're going to get to where we need to be in there a little quicker by going down a screen and then going down um, a pit on the next one. So right here, go across this bridge and you want to get Gilligan to go into the hole and then get Skipper to go down. I forgot for a second, so I had to backtrack. It's so easy to forget what you're doing in this game just because it's all so very similar. As soon as you land, though, that's exactly the location of the stone tablet, so it works out pretty well to take the little shortcut like that. Once you have it in hand, we're going to be taking it to the professor. Make sure Gilligan's with you and head up the ladder where we uh, see Mr. and Mrs. Hal. Now you want to go across the bridge. This time, though, we're not going to go down into the pit. Instead, head back up here. Go across the water. And head over to the left past all the wild boars again. Get Gilligan to fall into the hole, and then have Skipper follow him. This will take you to a different part of this cave system. Thankfully, the uh, Aborigine enemies that are around here, you can just do a single punch and knock them away, and they'll just run away from you. Right out of the hole and down one screen is the Professor. Now, we have to go back to Mr. Hal. Yep, <laughs> real fun, but pretty much what we're going to be doing is the exact same way we uh, just came. We're going to go back. The only difference is we um, have to go over to the right in the cave system here. Watching out for a few enemies along the way. Head up here. And this will take you to this waterway, which we can use as a shortcut, thankfully, to get quickly back to the ladder where Mr. Hal is. Of all things, we now have to go get another item for Mr. Hal, who uh, won't give us what we need unless we go get it. It's kind of interesting that we're trying to save Marianne from headhunters. She could potentially be eaten, but uh, we're going to, you know, concern ourselves with petty things. I guess that's just the nature of the show and works well for the characters. <laughs> Up here, though, is what we need, just another giant tree for Gilligan to climb on up. After the little humor about the golf ball and golf club, we now have to work our way back to Mr. Howe. Thankfully, not too far of a pathway that we have to take in order to get back. Just be careful that Gilligan doesn't fall into the pit off here. Once you talk to Mr. Hal, we're going to head back over here, and you want to go up this time. Go over the river. Be sure to have enough distance so that you can actually cross it all the way. Head over to the left here, and you want to get Gilligan to fall down into the pit and follow him down.
It's so annoying sometimes to get Gilligan to just stay with you. Head over to the left and then up the ladder here. Over and back down to the Professor. He's like, I, I've deciphered it, and here's a giant club to go take out the headhunters. Couldn't give us the club before and deal with the headhunters. Had to worry about the stone tablet. That was more important. Make sure Gilligan's with you. Use the shortcut in the water here. Once into the cave system, head over to the right and down. And then across this screen to the left, watching out for a couple of more enemies along the way. At the end of this path is going to be our next boss encounter. Thankfully, we don't need Gilligan with us, so if we get scared off, it's not that big a deal. We'll get him when we leave. We're going to get the boss into the upper left corner, hold up on the D-pad, and just keep pressing the attack button. And we'll be able to keep hitting him over and over again without him being able to hit us. It'll take a few hits, but once the boss leaves the room, we find the key in order to save Marianne. Once we go back to the previous screen, we get Gilligan back with us. Be careful of the rocks. They actually do hurt you when you try to jump over them if you mess up and he falls, which is pretty annoying, but still, gotta be careful because of it. Go up here, get across the sand pit. and then up two screens in order to find where Marianne is. I hope you enjoy this set of dialogue about the wrong hole. We get to see it repeat it later on when we have to save Mrs. Howe from a similar situation. Thankfully, though, that is the end of the episode. Once we have saved Marianne, we're moving on to episode 3. So now we're focused more on this stone tablet, and that becomes kind of like the focal point of the main story here, and for this episode we're finding other pieces of the stone tablet. 
but don't worry, the gameplay, the exciting gameplay, isn't gonna change up too much. Head up here and talk to Marianne if you like to. You don't need to talk to her. It still counts, whatever little thing. Uh, you just basically get told about the holes here. We're going to drop into the left hole. That's the one you need. It's a different area you'll be in if you drop into the right one. Head up here and then up the ladder. Jump across a couple of spikes watching out for the enemy and then go down the first entrance and make it across the waterway. Make sure you jump up high enough so you have enough space. Head down here and talk to Mr. Hal. So now Mr. Hal wants to go for a swim. He's in a cave underneath the island but his concern right now is going for a swim, so we need to go get his swim trunks. Thankfully, it's not going to be hard for us to get back to where we need to. Unfortunately, uh, Gilgan gets scared off by the uh, Aborigine that's now in love with him. We work our way over here, and we find Mrs. Hal. Make sure Gilligan is with you, of course, and uh, you'll get the bathing suit for Mr. Hal. And now we gotta go take it to him. Once again, fall down the left of the two holes here. Thankfully, it's a pretty easy path for us to get back to Mr. Hal. Once we are back, he gives us a piece of the stone tablet. That's, our, of course, our main goal, so that's great that we get a piece of the stone tablet, but still, just the fact we had to get a uh, bathing suit in order to get that piece is just absurd, but uh, fitting, I guess. Head down here. Be sure to go through the shortcut, but don't go through the third time there. Get off into the cave system and head up here where the professor is located. Thankfully, it's a really nice shortcut to get here. Now you need to get a melting solution, which Marianne apparently can make. So we already know where Marianne is located. We just have to work our way back there. Head over here to the left and use the waterway now to get back out of the cave system and back into the forest jungle area. Apparently there are tigers on this island and plenty of them. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to dodge, as well as, like, all the enemies are. Once we're back to Marianne, make sure that you're able to talk to her. You gotta be really careful that Gilligan doesn't go down one of the holes. From there, we're gonna go right back down from where we came, jump across the spikes, and go into the river in order to take the shortcut. You just wanna make sure that you go not too far to the right so that you can get to the left and go down this hole. Once there, jump across the spikes and head all the way over to the left and then downwards. 
Once down, continue over to the left getting across one of those annoying sand pits. Once out of the sand pit, work your way along the bottom and go to the next screen. Here is where you'll locate the giant tree with the item that we need. Now I'm going to head along the top, it's just easy to avoid all the enemies. Head down and then across the mud, watching out for a couple of warthogs. Use the sand pit in order to take a shortcut. I went a little bit too quickly, so I'll have to use a rope in order to get Gilligan with me, but... Thankfully I have a few. Now we get a formula from Mary Ann and have to take it to the professor. Jump across the spikes, get into the water, and take it down one screen and then head over to the far right side, taking the upper pathway to the professor. He ends up giving us the stone tablet, a piece of the stone tablet, as well as the club again. Jump across the water, get Gilligan to go down that hole, and then you follow behind, jumping across the spikes, and head down. When you get out of the pit, instead of going left like we did before, now you want to head over to the right. Head down, watching out for some more spikes to jump across, and then a big mud pit to run across. Head down and get ready for the next boss encounter. For the boss, we're going to hit him a couple of times, get him over to the left, and then just keep mashing the attack button once again. Similar to what we've been doing for the previous fights, it just ends up being extremely easy to do this. If you're low on health like I am, you should eat some food and heal yourself, but thankfully I'm pretty confident that he won't be able to end up hitting me here. For defeating the boss, you end up finding another stone tablet.
Episode number four has us trying to uh, find this idol so we can make a wish. The uh, stone tablet was a, uh, a funny incident, that was uh, for sure. Episode 4 is pretty lengthy overall, but it's mostly because we just gotta do a lot of running back and forth. Head up here, and you'll make your way over this water in order to find Marianne. From there, use the waterway as a shortcut, and then work your way over to the right side. And down here, where you'll find the tree that you need. Head down here, working your way across the spikes, watching out for some warthogs. And then you want to head up here and then across the wonderful sand pit and back to where Marianne is located. Now, Mrs. Hal has been taken by the headhunters. We end up getting the club early in this mission because of that. So it ends up helping us out a little bit with some of the enemies around. Watch out for the Aborigine that wants to kiss Gilligan. And up here and across in order to make this pit, make sure that Gilligan goes down the pit first before you follow. Get across the waterway, you'll have two paths to choose from, take the upper path, and then get across the sand to the ladder. Once down here, head over to the left, watching out for some monkeys, and then go down the first passageway to make it to the boss encounter here. We're gonna get the boss to get away from us, and then get him up into the corner, and then do what we've been doing all along once again. Thankfully, it's just as easy as all the other fights. We get the key as well as then we can just go down one screen in order to find Mrs. Howe. So we end up getting some money for saving Mrs. Hal, and now we have to go find Mr. Hal. From where we were, we're gonna head back, and thankfully it's only one more screen that we're gonna have to take. This sand though is tricky, it goes the opposite way of what you're expecting, so be sure you're at the bottom and jump into it in order to get across. We're then gonna use it as a shortcut though to get to the next area that we need. Get Gilligan to fall into this pit off of the bridge. And then just work your way down a couple of screens in order to make it back to this ladder. Just watch out for these Aborigine guys with the clubs. Work your way across, and now you're dealing with some more Warthog enemies. And 
and then head up and across the sand and back up to the location where Marianne is. Sometimes if you're lucky you can get a weird thing where you jump at Marianne and you'll end up on your back <laughs> like you tripped uh, and end up getting the cutscene to activate which is pretty funny. Now we need to go tell Mr. Hal about dinner. So work our way using the shortcut and then back up here. To where the big uh, mud pit is and that hole that we used earlier. Gilligan's Island is one of those shows that ran for only a few seasons, but because of syndication and the like, it just ended up being popular in many generations of TV viewers. It even got spin-offs in the form of cartoon series, as well as a couple of television movies that continued the story of the castaways. And I have to admit, while I wasn't the biggest fan of Gilligan's Island, I have seen plenty of episodes over the years. I am, though, a pretty big fan of classic sitcoms in general. Up here, of course, we find Mr. Hal once again. So he's famished, he wants something to eat, and uh, in order to tide him over for dinner, we have to now go get him a piece of pie. So now we have to head back to Marianne get the pie, and then bring it back. Just a lot of running back and forth is what we get to do. One of the things famous with the show is that at the end of the third season, the final season, they don't get off the island. Uh, they kind of ended up uh, dealing with that in the made-for-TV movie. However, there was supposed to be a fourth season. The show initially had been renewed before uh, a few weeks later then being cancelled. By now you probably gotten this path uh, <laughs> figured out as we make it once again back up and to where Marianne's located. From Marianne, it's now time to head back to Mr. Hal, the same exact path that we took before. We're going to do that once again. No, this isn't Groundhog's Day. We actually are making somewhat progress throughout this game. If they had just made things a little bit more interesting, branched things out a bit, it could have been more uh, enjoyable overall, but I find just going back and forth repeatedly not the most exciting overall gameplay. We pretty much get to cross everything along the way as well. We get to cross waterway, sand, and mud in order to get back and forth between Marianne and Mr. Hal. Thankfully, Mr. Hal is satisfied with the pie. And now we need a secret weapon. And guess who has the secret weapon, can you guess? Yeah, it's Marianne. So it's back through the same path we've taken a few times now. Thankfully, it's pretty easy, especially once you've memorized it. Now 
jump across the spikes here and back up the ladder going across the big old mud pit right next to us. Thankfully the enemies are pretty easy and we got that club early on. We do have another boss to deal with later on so you want to conserve your health or at least have some food items because the boss can be a little bit damaging but it's still pretty easy just like the rest of the fights. Thankfully we make it back up here to where Marianne is, and we get the secret weapon. From where we are now, we have to once again, and I'm not kidding, go back to Mr. Hal. By now, you're definitely an expert at this path. Finally, we make it back to Mr. Hal again. He lets us know that we have to cross the bridge. So, go up here, and the bridge that we've been falling down in most of this level, we're going to instead now go across and go over here. Unfortunately, Gilligan didn't follow me. I do have ropes, though, at least. Watch out for a few enemies, you can jump over them pretty easily. Head down two screens, and then across here I'm going to use some food, just to bring back some of my health. Make sure Gilligan's with me, and take on the final boss of the game, the skeleton. Yeah, for some reason a giant skeleton. The other ones were like a giant bear, aborigine guy, you know, I get it. But now, giant skeleton. I find holding up on the D-pad and mashing the attack buttons pretty good. If you can get them into the corner over here, you can really devastate them. Just don't get too close or else your club will end up missing. If it continually misses, you may need to move down a step in order to hit him again. Thankfully, you can use items during the fight, so if you have food items, you can use them uh, at any point in order to continue the fight. It doesn't take too many hits. But the uh, skeleton will go down, and we have found the stone statue. We can sit back and enjoy the ending to Adventures of Gilligan's Island.
So there you have it, the Adventures of Gilligan's Island for the NES. Basically a giant fetch quest. Something I'm used to in more modern games, but uh, it's one of those things you just didn't do all that often back then. I think if there was just a little bit more variety of some of the paths you gotta take, especially in Episode 4, it would be a more interesting, enjoyable game. But it's honestly just kind of a chore a lot of times going back and forth and back and forth. Either way, it's one of those games I had always wanted to finish and learn how to actually play it, and I'm glad that I got the chance to finally work on it for the last couple of weeks and get this video together. After the credits, we then get the end. You can see Gilligan's Island in the background. And with that, it will wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.